Good morning, guys. I am here with Fortaleza this week, and uh, if you know me, you probably know how excited I am to be here, right? And we arrived, I arrived super late last night, and then this morning we're coming in to see the glass bottles. So I've talked about this many times as well, that a lot of the Fortaleza bottles, the Los Abuelos bottles, are hand-blown. You know, so we're gonna come and check out their uh, the facility here where they do that, which is just awesome. Getting to see the artistry that goes behind the bottle of one of the most artesian uh, tequilas made out there. So let's go check out the production of their uh, bottles. This is kind of what put them in the map, guys. So uh, the gentleman who owns this, he blew the two biggest bottles of tequila in the world. He literally blew these himself. These are replicas, of course, because I'm sure the real ones are not just hanging out on this flimsy table. Uh, so this guy has been blowing glass literally since he was like eight years old. So he's been doing this for like 50 years. And he took it from his dad, who was actually the second glass blower in, uh, in, Guadalajara, in all of Guadalajara. And, you know, like I said, the big bottles is kind of what the, put the, this on the map. And it's all recycled glass. It's all hand blown. Uh, and we're gonna get to see the whole process, how they make the Fortaleza bottle. Um, you know, Fortaleza bottles are, everybody knows them if you know Fortaleza, uh, and it's just beautiful bottle fulls of like little Easter eggs and stuff too, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna show you guys now the whole process from start to finish of when they make the Fortaleza bottle. So this is the whole process of how they make the Fortaleza bottle. So it starts with just this piece of smoldering hot glass coming out of that oven. I can't tell you how hot and how loud this place is. And then they just roll it in this rolling table right here. And really knowing how much to roll it, and most importantly, how much to blow in it as you're rolling. You don't wanna make it into a light bulb, which you're gonna see me making in a little bit. And then you roll it around a little bit more, make that smooth. And then he walks around to this right here where he's gonna make pretty much like a dent on it, which is where the bottle is gonna break off. So they go into this patent Fortaleza mold right here. And knowing how much to blow on this as it goes into the mold is another art form. So it doesn't become too thin. It becomes, you know, the Fortaleza bottle. And this is when we actually start recognizing the shape of the bottle. So right now you can see how it's cooling off. Half the bottle is not that blowing red anymore. And what this guy's gonna do here, he's just gonna put a dent on it where it's gonna break off pretty easily. And then they walk it to this like little table of like broken glass. So this guy has a little bit of like that glowing glass on the end of his stick as well, which makes the bottle blue into it pretty much. And it goes back into the oven. And this is where we start seeing the process of where they're gonna put, you know, the bottle hole where the cork is gonna go. So you see that that part of the bottle is glowing red. And this is what this gentleman is gonna do right here, just making that like, you know, a shape of the bottle of the Fortaleza that we all know and love. And some people hate where the cork goes, which I've never had any issues with it. I love that as well. And then this is pretty cool right here too. He's just shaping it out. And that's why no Fortaleza bottle is the same. Lightest tap and it goes into this like little holding device where he walks into this other step where they're just pretty much burning the bottle of the glass so it becomes smooth again. Then they put it back into this oven which is filled with sand. And what this does is cool off the bottles gradually because if there's a sudden change of temperature, the glasses would just shatter. So that's how you make the Fortaleza bottle. So they don't trust us making the Fortaleza bottle, which honestly, I wouldn't either. <laughs> so they're actually gonna teach us how to make, well, they're gonna try to teach us how to make a shot glass. Should be simple, right? So I'm gonna try to make it right now, so let's go. Okay. Let's see this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, made a light bulb too. <laughs> so, my first light bulb. <laughs> Gracias. 
So we stopped in this little uh, tiendita right here behind us to get some pulque. Uh, this is the pulque fuerte, which is just a pulque that has been fermenting for a longer time. So I, again, I love bitter fermented stuff. So this is the one for me, so salucita. So we went to the hotel, chilled for a little bit, and now we're gonna take a walk to El Buo. If you know tequila, you probably know El Buo. This is a store in Tlaquepaque, which is like a suburb of Guadalajara. And they have the best collection of tequila, I think, that you're gonna be able to find in Guadalajara. Now, is it a little bit pricey? A little bit. It's a little bit pricey for Mexico, but good luck trying to find the stuff that they have, right? But it's still much cheaper than anything you can find in LA. Let's go check out El Buo, see what they have. Um, we're gonna hang out with the owner a little bit, and I think it pays off to be here with the guys from Fortaleza. And we're also, with the guys from Volan here as well. Volan is another amazing brand that comes from El Pandillo. So let's go check out El Buu. So they have all the Fortaleza and of course all the Los Abuelos bottles, which, you know, you gotta love. Tapatio 110, Tapatio Reposado. They have all the Ochos. They also have the old El Tesoro bottles, the whole El Tequileño line. Of course, Volans. Volans is another great brand coming from El Pandillo. Talking about El Pandillo, we got Primo, we got Siete Legas as well. One of my favorite brands right now, Don Fulano Chamucos is great as well. They have the whole Arete line, including the Extra Añejo, the whole G4 line as well. Alta, Calle 23, Casca Wing, one of my favorites as well. And they have all the Artenom and Caballito Serrero. And I gotta give a shout out to Uruapan and Michoacan. These licores right here are awesome. We did a little tasting. We can see that we had a little fun here with the owner. It was just such a great time. I cannot recommend this place enough. And I don't know if you know this guy, but he did some shopping too. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> all right, guys. So we hung out in Guadalajara a little bit. We did our little thing, we walked around, we shopped a little bit. Now we're gonna head over to Tequila and that's where like the real trip is gonna begin. So we're gonna head over about, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half to Tequila. So we're packing it up. We have our suitcases here and we're about to head over to Tequila. So, vamonos. <laughs> So right now we are at Casa Sayas, which is actually, this is the hotel that belongs to El Tequileño. And it's an amazing hotel. Right now we're gonna go down. I'm gonna meet all the guys from Fortaleza. We're gonna have a dinner at the museum from Los Abuelos, which is the Salsa Museum, pretty much telling this whole story. We get them with family and everything. Which I'm gonna not take my microphone right now. I'm gonna enjoy the time tonight. Uh, we're gonna enjoy the dinner. We're gonna hang out a little bit. I'm gonna try to film here and there, but I'm not gonna focus so much on the filming this time because I really wanna enjoy this dinner at the museum over there. So it's 7.23. I'm supposed to be there at 7.20. Let's stop talking and let's go down there. Oh. 